Hello everybody, I'm Amar Central and welcome back to another video. As you will see by the title, this is going to be a masterclass video, a teaching video, something I haven't done, I've been promising to do them in all sorts of areas, something I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, I have recently um, started sort of, as you will know, I've done photography for years, um, long before the YouTube channel started up. I've been doing bus and transport photography for about a decade now, um, believe it or not. So, um, something I've started to do, as you can see in picking up a magazine, is contribute to major bus magazines. Um, this is Buses. I also contribute to Bus Fair magazine. And this is my photo on the front cover. This is not a brag, this is me showing the sort of photography that I do. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you from beginning to end of the day how I get my photography and how I do it, sort of the formatting I do. I will show you how I find the buses, how I calculate the sun, how I take the actual photographs and then a bit of the little bits of editing that I do afterwards to show you how to sort of nail your photography and more central style. So the first website I'm going to show you through is bustimes.org. As you can see from this screen, all you do is you type in bustimes.org into your web browser at the top and it'll come up with this. There's other ways of doing it, you can click on your region area to find your operator through that way, or do what I do, that is click on map and go searching that way. So as you will see, my map comes up with the place I was last um, looking at, that is Sheffield. So here we are looking at Sheffield. Um, it does cover most operators now, does this um, sort of map, um, including Trent Barton was the most recent one at the time of recording. So you can do with this is you can click on each individual vehicle, it will come up with the route it's on, the direction it's heading, and the vehicle and its registration. Obviously it's not always correct, as ticket machines do get swapped round, but it is correct about 95% of the time. So what we're looking for today is the newly and repainted Sheffield City buses, the single decker 69525 and double decker 37472. Um, so those two entered service alongside 36275. Um, the photo of mine ended up in Bustle magazine, so I want to get the photos of the other two as well. So instantly I can see if I click into this bigger screen that there's one here painted as that, and lo and behold, it is 37472. So that's one of the ones that we need today. And it's on the 51 service today. And if we click further in, we've got two here. So if we click on the other 51 one, that is 36275. Already got that one. Not of interest today. But if we click on the other one, that's on the 869525. Now out of the two, um, 37472 and 69525, I'm going to focus on this one as it's the one that I have been after um, and sort of more desperate to get. So if I click onto that, I click on the root number. Sometimes it comes with the direction, sometimes it just clicks up with the root number. So if I have a little look at the root number, it has just left, if we know the geography of Sheffield, it has just left Sheffield Interchange. As you can see, there's an X78 in there. Um, there's an 11A and um, on layover, etc. So if we click onto the 18 route and we have a little look at this, it comes with a notification telling us that there's some diversions ongoing. Um, and if we have a little look at this, um, it's then hourly. So we, um, our bus is set up on the 1050 working. That by the looks of it, um, takes an hour and a half to get up to Hillsborough. So it will be up at Hillsborough. Um, 10.50, so if we go two hours ahead, 12.38. So if you have a little look, it's then 12.45, and the bus will return into Sheffield Interchange at 14.21. So for those wondering what camera I used for today, and what camera I use generally for my photography, here it is, um, the Nikon Coolpix B500. Um, I believe the retail price is about £220 on this at the moment. Um, so I believe you, I believe that's the retail price from Argos. Um, it's quite a nifty device. And you don't necessarily need this um, for the sort of photos that I've taken and, and will show you today or for future photographs. Um, however, having a camera like this does come in handy, especially for the zoom shots, as phones and things do have quite good cameras. However, on the zoom shots, they can fail. So this is a fancy app. Um, one of my favourite ones, um, where what you can do with this 
is if you it will take you a bit of time to get used to it where that yellow line is is where the sun rays is going to be so you're basically um looking to see where the sun's going to be obviously you've got to look at google maps to correspond it and to make sure you haven't got any shadows from buildings but on a basis this shows you where the sun's going to be so it shows you where the best place to get the bus is so if we have a little look back on bus times this bus gets into sheffield center at 1421 so if we click this on to about 14.20 there, and we go around to the interchange, wherever the interchange has gone, and there it is, Hammer Lane, and we click onto this, this is showing us that the shadows are going to be, the sun is going to be on that side, and the shadows are going to be facing that way towards the electric works and that side of the interchange. We need to have a little look at where the 18 comes into the bus station from though. So we will have a little look onto the tracking map. There we go. So as you can see, it's quite an extensive bus route. It covers the entirety of Sheffield. Um, and I was a bit incorrect. It does actually come in from the other direction. So if we have a little look at the direction it does actually come in from. Da, 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 da. So we've got this side. Find Harmer Lane again. There we go. So if we have a little look, the shadows unfortunately are in the wrong position. Um, for getting the bus on its way into the centre. Um, we could probably, if we wanted to, um, head out into Sheffield and get it somewhere further sort of on its way around the route, somewhere along this section going around Littledale, Greenland, all of that lot. Um, that would probably be a good spot to get it on as the shadows are in the right location. However, we're going to go for a shot in the city centre that basically means um, we're going to be getting it going out on its next service. So here we are, as you can see now, we're in E200. Um, so all the prep has happened. It is now quarter past two. Um, coming around this corner any second now is 69525. The bus that we're going to be photographing on its way back out again Obviously, as you can see here, the sun is in the wrong position. We're basically facing towards it at the moment with the shadows in the place. So we're going to just film it coming in, and then I'm going to walk you over to the spot that we've already sort of picked out for where we're going to photograph it. I'm um, having done a little bit of background research, and um, we'll wait until this 120 is gone. So here it is. Having done a little bit of background research, it's coming on the 18, and it is going out on the 73 at 14.35 so we've got a spot picked out we'll take you over there in a minute um, but here it is coming in now so this is the spot that we've picked out as you can see my shadows there facing directly on the buses and as this stagecoach bus is about to demonstrate very shortly this is the angle that we're going to be going for so as you can see as this 120 comes round um, I'm going to be stood a little bit further back than this but it provides a perfect um, turning shot with the shadows in the right position. So now we're back in the office and we're going to go through the photos that I took and the editing processes. So as you can see from this, um, unfortunately, um, it not, sometimes it happens, um, it's not the end of the world, but unfortunately the photo plan that we went for and I showed you didn't work. Um, due to the bus leaving um, about a minute late, um, a 120 vehicle, an E400, got in front. And as you will be able to see from this image, um, when it zooms in, um, you can see the shadow in the corner um, of where the 120 was. The problem with that was I'd planned um, this photo was perfect a few seconds prior to um, this image being taken. But because of where the shadow was, it wasn't possible to take it. So we have a little look through this and we'll see what's salvageable. So that one, as you can see, the problem with it being a few seconds late was the it's a lot lighter on the front. We'll have a little look and see what we can do to edit that. Um, however, I, I can't work miracles, quite frankly. So we'll delete that image. Um, that one didn't work. That one again. The best thing what I do is I spam up to between four or seven photographs. On my camera, the spam limit's seven. So if you do time it and you get seven photos, it, it provides a few more opportunities to nail the photograph. So a little look on this one. That's probably the best out of the bad bunch. Um, as you can see, again, it is very, very clear that the lighting on the front is different to the side. Again, what you may find is when you first sort of start taking photographs in this manner, that may happen. 
So what I've done, just in case um, this happened, as I had a little sneaky suspicion it wouldn't be plain sailing, I took a few photos of the bus actually arriving onto stand. Um, again, obviously not the best, as they weren't meant to be sort of used, but we got a few other shots here. So for the demonstrations of editing, we may use these. So have a little look, obviously sometimes you get a few that sort of blur or the camera shifts down a bit. So it's always good to take a good few photos of buses. Don't go mad, don't be like, I'll take a hundred of one. Been there, done that, I don't recommend it. So now we're going to go on to the editing software that I use. It is bfunky.com. If you're going to slash create and slash this, it will come up with the photo editor. If you just go into bfunky, you can click down onto the photo editor facility. So if we click onto this, we are then able to open our files. So as you can see, there's some of the thumbnails from Talking Buses. I will click onto my photos. As you can see, I've taken a lot of photos um, recently, some of which end up in the thumbnails. And we'll go into a new folder. That's where our photos are. And we'll see what work we can do with this one. Again, as I do keep seeing, we can't work miracles on it. Um, but we'll see if we can add a bit of shading to try and improve the quality um, of the image. However, with the front end being as highlighted as it is, it may not work. So if the process is this, what you can do is sometimes crop um, images. So I usually go for the 600 by 400, and then if you click, type in whatever figures you want, 600 by 400 is your six by four image when you print it, when you print a physical photograph off. 1280 by 720, is a YouTube thumbnail, um, so they're just that's one that I always sort of look at as well. So if you click lock aspect ratio, no matter how much you pull this out, it will stay at the same ratio of photograph as you expand it. So we'll expand it onto this and we will click OK. So now we're left with this photograph. So as you can see, the ones with the stars here are the premium stuff. For what I do with my editing, you don't need them. Sometimes rotating as well, although we don't need it for this photograph, sometimes rotating by one degree um, can improve the quality of an image as well. Um, something I do recommend looking into if you're not too sure. So if we go down onto here and we go onto exposure. Now, I usually do a mix of brightness, um, highlights and shadows to get it to work. So if we click this, as you can see, it bright, it reduces the brightness, create more of a crisp image, usually pointing out a lot more of the panels and things that can sometimes be hidden. So then I'll go on to shadows and we will again create more of the shadows. As you can see, the front end is still pretty highlighted. So we'll go on to highlights and make it a bit darker. Unfortunately, the problem you've got is, as you can see, with making an image that the lighting's a bit off on, um, you, no matter what you do, unless you edited this separately and plunked it onto the, um, cropped it back onto the image, you're still going to have that brightness issue on it. Um, unfortunately, it's a problem that we've had um, with this. So there, um, so that's sort of editing. I will show you how to edit one that's sort of without the sunlight as well. But usually with the sunlight, what I tend to recommend is down the brightness a little bit, only to about minus 20 at most. I won't go any further, as you can see, it can come quite dark quite quickly. So for this one, because of what it is, minus 20 sort of works-ish for that. So if we save this, I always do that that's um, sort of dash one to um, sort of signify if it's an edited image and usually put on quality is 100% although you can end up with quite a big file. So there we go, so that's saving. So we will open up another one of the photos that we took. And what I will do is I am going to be a little bit sneaky. I did take some photos of this bus yesterday as well. Um, although I didn't say anything about it today, I did already have some photos on the archive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up one of them. I got them just in case it didn't work today. Um, so what we'll do is we will have a little look at this one and I will show you what to do with photos without the same lighting on them. So as you can see with this image, it is incredibly bright. Sometimes cameras do this. Without the editing, you can improve it. So if we go on to rotate and we have a little look, um, as you can see, if you rotate it onto one, you do have the sort of flat image of the bus. However, it does look a bit disorientated in this image. So we'll leave it on zero when it clicks. There we go. So we'll do the crop as well. 
600 by 400 is my recommendation um, and when you're doing the crop as well like with the last image try and make sure that your image is sort of equally if you're photographing just the buffs make sure it is equally distributed sort of on the bottom and the top as much as you can and side to side as you will be able to tell if your image is slightly disorientated on one side um, of the bus. If you are going for scenic photos and you want the bit of the background then I do recommend bobbing your photograph up like this to ensure you've got the background in there as well. But for this photograph we're going to go with a half, we're pretty much half and half with a little bit more on the top um, obviously as you want to show off more of the scenery rather than just the road in the image. So we'll click onto that and we'll see how that looks. That looks all right. A little bit extra on the front than probably on the sort of back end of the image, um, behind, sort of behind and in front of the bus. But sometimes that works a bit better anyway. So if we click onto exposure, initially we'll go onto brightness, and we will down. We've got to down the brightness a fair bit. Obviously not too much as we've got the other ones, but to about 32, 33 onto this one. Now to ensure that we've done the right brightness, sometimes you can change them about and, and constantly change them. It's not the end of the world if you click it on there without saving. And if you click back onto shadows as well, shadows we will click onto about 25. I think we'll probably do brightness a little bit less, although what we need to decide on our image is highlights. So as you can see, the highlights does bring out a lot more of the bus. We've got the Sheffield name on the front as well that isn't, the, from what I'm told, is going to be um, corrected because um, it is quite difficult to see anywhere so then if we've got the highlights we do that a little bit more and see if we can get away with a little bit more shadow on it and we've got quite a crisp image it's entirely up to you how you edit your images up this is just my recommendation of what i do but with images like this where it's a bit it's a bit dark and there's um a lot of cloud cover um sort of using a bit more on these shadows and the brightness to probably just about between minus 30 minus 40 um, does bring out the image a bit better certainly so yes um, i will end the video off here um, so that's my master class in photography um, as i say i've sort of contributed to magazines recently write the articles for some as well um, so i wanted to show you guys after a decade of doing photography um, how i sort of work and how i get the photos i get so that you guys can hopefully work on getting um, the same quality photographs and potentially even better so as I say, for improvements from today's photos, I think what I've learned from today is that when I'm prepping photos, I do have to always prep for the unexpected. I always need a backup plan. And I think I demonstrated that today with having the backup photos in the interchange, having the backup one from yesterday, um, because obviously all, it doesn't work all of the time. Sometimes I would say about one in five photographs are perfected and it is quite um, satisfying when your photograph is perfected. So you hopefully when you, you might have a, a few issues at the beginning where you sort of you go for photograph, it doesn't necessarily work and it happens to the best of us, but keep going. Cause believe me, when you get a perfect photograph, it is incredibly satisfying. So yes, remember always as well, when you're taking photographs to stay safe, um, don't do anything stupid like walking, like stand in front of moving traffic to get a photo always stay safe in how you plan your photo spots um, and what have and if something doesn't look safe do not do it there will always be another opportunity to photograph that bus as proven by the shots today I got some yesterday and I will probably be going out the next day after this recording to try and perfect the photo so yes, on that note, I do hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you do need, if you do have any other questions, please let me know and I'm quite happy to do a follow-up video on this if there's anything I've missed out on or any other tips and things you want to know about. So thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe. If you have a question, suggestion, you do download, don't forget to ask me in the comments. Thanks again for watching and I do see you in the next video I make. Goodbye for now. Bye.